Ready for an adventure? Explore outdoors with KCRA3. From exhilaration to imagination. I was like, wow, that's awesome. Heartwarming to heart pounding. What do you think? Fantastic. California is filled with unique, historic, and just plain beautiful spots to get out and explore. Come along as we get wet from one waterfall and wonder in amazement at how another turned from water into fire. Go underground where one man's unique vision has trees reaching for the sky along a maze of tunnels. Check into a hotel enshrouded in the veil of mystery. Watch colorful sunrises, witness birds soaring, feel where nature lands in the palm of your hand. In the end, take a moment to relax and reflect and decide whether this is the spot to show your undying love to another. All of these places symbolize just how much there is to discover if you take time to explore. It's almost like you want to keep it a secret, but at the same time, people should be able to come out here and enjoy it. Hi and welcome to this special edition of Explore Outdoors. I'm Deirdre Fitzpatrick. Over the next half hour, we're going to be taking you to some spectacular places for you and the family to get outside and have some fun. Our tour guide is Mike Tassell. Deirdre, I am super excited to take you along on the trails to visit some of the eye-opening, beautiful and historic spots that I've found and discovered myself. One of my favorite places to visit, waterfalls. And what better place to start with those than Yosemite National Park. The crazy fact about this week's spot is that while right next door, Yosemite Valley gets millions of visitors a year, the number of people who come to go through this tunnel and witness what's on the other side, numbers less than 50,000. Roughly two miles on the other side of this tunnel along a relatively easy to follow trail is this. Wapama Falls, a dramatic, stunning, and magical 1,400-foot waterfall that rivals any of Yosemite's more popular and more visited falls. I first learned of this hike from travel blogger and Teton Sports Ambassador Paul Parsons, who said this. It's almost like you want to keep it a secret, but at the same time, people should be able to come out here and enjoy it. Unlike Yosemite's iconic Vernal and Nevada Falls, a fraction, less than 2% of the number of yearly visitors to Yosemite Valley ever venture to see these falls. The falls tucked into the park's northwest corner in the Hetch Hetchy Valley, a valley so similar to Yosemite, nearly the same size and length, that John Muir called it a wonderfully exact counterpart of the great Yosemite. Keep in mind, if you come to visit these falls, you will get wet. The bridge is literally right at the bottom of the fall. Wet because these falls have a series of footbridges that cross directly below the tumbling, raging whitewater, which leads to a warning. There are times when these falls make crossing the bridges hazardous. But if you go, don't be surprised if you too experience a moment of wonder, of spirituality, or of emotion, like Matthew Irvin who carried his mother's ashes here to experience this waterfall together. Everywhere I go on an adventure, awesome. she goes. What do you think? Fantastic. So again, if you're willing to walk through this tunnel, the trail will lead you to an unforgettable, and for now at least, less visited spot. The Wapama Falls in Yosemite National Park. From the least crowded part of the park to the most crowded, Here's another dramatic waterfall, but you better plan now for next year. If you've never witnessed the modern version of Yosemite's Firefall, it's a natural wonder of light and water at just the right time with the sun's at the right angle under the right weather conditions around early February. Horsetail Falls is transformed into a ribbon of glowing orange and red. This picture from 2017 captured how popular and even damaging this event has become for photographers and spectators. But did you know the origin of the term firefall in Yosemite was actually anything but natural? It was a man-made event started in the late 1800s when the owners of the then Glacier Point Hotel around 5 in the afternoon would build a bonfire out of the red fir bark right on the edge of Glacier Point. And they had these long pushers. They opened the little gate and started pushing and they tried to keep a steady 
a flow of the coals going over the edge uh, until all the coals were gone. The effect of that event of pushing hot coals over the edge created a similar ribbon of fiery orange and red falling toward the valley floor. These are historical pictures showing the popularity of that man-made event in decades past. But that event stopped in January 1968 when the director of the National Park Service ordered it stopped due to the overwhelming number of visitors. And while that firefall is now a memory of a bygone era, each year Mother Nature offers a natural chance to see the wonder of light and water, creating a nearly identical visual effect. But like Mother Nature herself, there's no guarantee what will or won't happen each year. Horsetail Falls in Yosemite National Park. Sticking with that waterfall theme, here's a spot in El Dorado County that not only has a waterfall, but a unique historical site nearby. This is Bassey Falls in the El Dorado National Forest, a 109-foot cascading waterfall slamming the rocks that is roughly a two-mile hike just off Ice House Road. How would you describe the fall? Beautiful. I was like, wow, that's awesome. But did you know, still present in the mountains north and east of the falls is this, a debris field from a World War II era military plane crash. Photographers like Greg Lamy sharing pictures of what it looked like. In November 1941, a B-17C bomber known as the Flying Fortress experienced catastrophic failure during a routine flight over the Sierra. Eight of its nine crew safely parachuted. The pilot did not. The wreckage of that crash was left as is on the forest floor. Joe Idoni captured dozens of pictures of the largely still intact wing, the military insignia, pieces and fragments of every part of the fuselage. But be aware, this area is protected by the U.S. Forest Service, and it is considered a crime to remove any of this debris. Also be aware that while nearby Bassey Falls is a relatively easy hike in the woods, the debris field is in a more remote and less traveled area better suited for those who know where they're going. Bassey Falls and the debris field of an old B-17 bomber crash both located in the El Dorado National Forest. A word of caution about that last trail. If you veer too far off the waterfall trail, it's pretty easy to get lost if you don't know where you're going. And it's a potential crime to disturb that plane wreckage site. Now, let's transition to a much, much smaller waterfall upstream of Folsom Lake. About a half mile upstream of the Salmon Falls Bridge is a spot where the birds soar, water falls, and color, depending on the time of year, lines the trail. This is the Acorn Creek Trailhead, one of the newest sections of the trail connecting the South Fork American River Trail System with the Folsom Lake State Recreation Area. Around 2011, the American River Conservancy purchased the 757-acre Salmon Falls Ranch, and by 2017, dozens of volunteers had constructed and completed this one-mile connector. Roughly a mile long, along a moderately smooth and uphill grade, is a path that leads through the trees to a junction at this gate. Take a left and you'll head towards Cronin Ranch, which we've highlighted before. But might I suggest, if you're up for a bit more exercise, take a right. Along the next mile, you'll be treated to views of the Salmon Falls Bridge and Folsom Lake. And if you're lucky, the hawks will put on an aerial show above you, and then you'll reach this bridge. Below it, a peaceful spot to sit on the rocks and enjoy the sounds of a babbling cascade of small waterfalls, as long as the water's flowing. Keep in mind, the trade-off for hiking here means having to go back uphill on the return trip. But if you do go, take time to soak in the sights and sounds of nature while also enjoying the hard work of the American River Conservancy and all those volunteers who extended more access to this area. The Acorn Creek Trailhead in El Dorado County. Now that spot's not the only place you can watch birds soaring overhead, but this next one, it's the only spot I know of where a bird may land literally in the palm of your hand. Let's head to Lake Tahoe at a spot just off the Mount Rose Highway. 
Above Lake Tahoe off of Highway 41 outside Incline Village is a trail to an unforgettable experience. And these pictures highlight the payoff for the roughly three and a half mile round trip. This is Chickadee Ridge and the name says it all. This hike is all about chickadees. Keep in mind, when there's snow on the ground, you may need snowshoes to reach the ridge top along the Tahoe Rim Trail. But once here, the advice is simple. When you hear the sounds of chirping in the trees, stop, hold out your hand, and wait. That's because in no time at all, a chickadee should likely land on your hand. And that's the point of this unique experience. A moment in time when chickadees will literally sit in the palm of your hand. And now while carrying bird seed is common to attract the birds, conservationists say these birds actually are accustomed to landing on hands even without food. So it's best not to feed the wildlife with some human food. So if you go, remember, stop, listen, hold out your hand, and... Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, he only took one. That freaks me out. <laughs> Don't get too jumpy. Instead, be patient and calm and savor a moment in time when a chickadee literally flies down and spends a moment right at your fingertips. Chickadee Ridge near Mount Rose above Lake Tahoe. Okay, let's switch gears now and drive to a spot along the river that's described as enshrouded in a veil of exciting mystery. Next stop, the town of Ride, California. Along the Sacramento River on Highway 160 southwest of Elk Grove is this, the Ride Hotel, a spot steeped in a history of fire, Hollywood celebrity, a notorious speakeasy past. According to the Elk Grove Historical Society, the original Ride Hotel built in 1886 burned down by fire. A second Ride Hotel built in 1918 would be torn down, ultimately replaced by the current four-story structure in the 1920s. And that is when historians say, Hotel Ride, quote, became notorious and surely enshrouded in a veil of exciting mystery. That's because this hotel played host to Hollywood, the rich and famous, even presidential candidate Herbert Hoover. Celebrities would tie up their yachts at a long burned down pier. During that time, at the height of prohibition, a speakeasy and casino with a secret tunnel was located underneath this hotel. Only those with the secret password could gain entrance. But multiple raids by the feds in the 1920s and 30s would lead to a crackdown and the bootleg booze business drying up. Today, reminders of a celebrity and notorious past before and after prohibition remains hung on the walls. So if you go to this historic landmark to stay or enjoy a Sunday brunch along the river, take a moment to soak up a history that includes links to secret rooms, hidden passages, and a past enshrouded in a veil of mystery. The Ride Hotel in Sacramento County. Well, that was a fun way to start the journey, but wait until you see where Mike is taking us next. It's underground to a truly one-of-a-kind spot where one man's vision of a maze of tunnels literally has trees reaching for the sky and thriving nearly hidden from the sun. Welcome back. Let's continue our journey and show you three truly unique spots. And we're going to start by going underground. We catch up with Mike just off of Highway 99 in Fresno. Along a busy commercial thoroughfare just off Highway 99 in Fresno, by this unassuming house is a stairway leading to a unique, unforgettable, underground state historic site. This is the Forestier Underground Gardens, and the man behind the story is Baldessere Forestier. What he created stands today as an intricate maze of underground passageways and rooms that are a symbol of his lifelong pursuit of a dream. Baldessere came to America from Sicily in 1901, hoping to become a citrus farmer. But Fresno's high heat and concrete like hard pan soil quickly turned his vision into something else. By hand, 
Using only simple farm tools, Baldessaire began carving what he dreamed would become an underground resort, a way to escape the heat. Over 40 years, he literally carved a three-level underground structure as deep as 23 feet, some 65 rooms in all, bedrooms, a kitchen, courtyards, and grottos, even an aquarium where visitors could view it from below. Throughout, he remained true to his citrus farming dreams, creating skylights that allowed citrus trees to grow protected from the scorching heat. He even built a table with a tree in the middle of it so he could pull fresh fruit off of it during dinner. He also stayed true to his religious beliefs. Throughout, plants and carvings were done in a series of three or seven. Three represented the Holy Trinity. Seven symbolized the seven sacraments. Baldessaire died before he could complete the signature room of his underground resort, the Grand Ballroom. His brother would ultimately finish that. So if you go, take time to marvel at how one man with a dream and a unique vision literally carved an oasis underground, even if it never became the resort he had imagined. The Forestier Gardens in Fresno. If you're looking for a unique spot a little closer than 99 in Fresno, how about Stockton and 99, specifically Carpenter Road in Stockton? Along an otherwise nondescript road in Stockton is an entrance, sure to catch your eye. But once you get past the lion statues guarding the Cambodian Buddhist temple, that is where the real eye-catching surprise awaits. Located a short drive past the entrance is a landscape dedicated to the Cambodian Buddha. Rows and rows of nearly a hundred colorful, larger-than-life statues. This one of a reclining Buddha measures in at roughly 50 feet long. Others are jewel-encrusted, all to help celebrate the life and story of the Cambodian Buddha. Founded in 1982, this temple was home to Southeast Asian refugees who escaped war-torn countries to rebuild their lives and preserve their ancestral cultural heritage. After all, this place was founded on the principle, without our culture, we will become lost and confused like fish out of water. So if you go, this landscape of colorful statues is free and open to the public, but the temple asks that you respect this property and follow the temple rules and local laws. The Cambodian Buddhist Temple along East Carpenter Road in Stockton. I like to do things in three, so one more unique spot just down this path, and it's all about love. It's a bridge connecting Forney Road to Missouri Flat Road in Placerville. Follow me as I take you over the El Dorado Trail Bridge over Weber Creek, a pedestrian bridge connecting Forney and Missouri Flat Roads in Placerville. But this isn't just any bridge. Midway across this span is this, a growing shrine to love, literally locked onto the bridge. Dozens upon dozens of locks engraved with couples' names, like Chris and Helen, Carolyn and Donnie, Kevin and Janie. Some are colorful, others traditional. Many have proclamations or quippy phrases like locked in love or hearts locked since 2002. Some are in memory, others etched with a paw print. The physical foundations of this bridge date back to the original PNSV railroad trestle built in the late 1800s. It was converted into the El Dorado Trail Bridge in 2009 and has since become a growing symbol to love. And while the walk across the bridge may have a beginning and an end, as this lock says, true love stories never have endings. The El Dorado Trail Bridge over Weber Creek in Placerville. Love it. All right, so with all the hustling Mike's been doing out on the roads and the trails, the bridges, I feel like it's time to like settle a little bit, stop and reflect. We'll have the story behind this pool and the gold rush history surrounding it coming up. 
If you enjoy exploring Northern California, just like Mike Tassell, we have an easy way for you to connect. Pull out your phone and open up the camera app. Scan that QR code and it will take you right to our Things to Do in California Facebook page. And there, you can actually share your ideas and see ideas from other people too. And maybe Mike Tassell will find a new spot to visit because of you. Time now for our last stop, and this one, a chance to slow down and soak in the gold rush history. A spot not far off Highway 49 in Grass Valley. On the outskirts of Grass Valley in Nevada County is a spot where you can't help but stop, relax, and enjoy a tranquil moment at a once bustling, deafening, loud spot. And it's tucked away in a corner of the Empire Mine State Park, better known as the site of one of California's oldest, deepest, and richest gold mines. The cascading and soothing reflecting pool is located in the northwest corner of the main visitor area behind the 1897 English Manor, known as the Empire Cottage. This serene spot was actually once an active swimming pool for George Starr, his family, and others. At that time, in the 1850s, the Empire Mine was in full operation, extracting more than 5 million ounces of gold from its 367 miles of deep mine shafts. George Starr considered a mining genius until the mine's closure in 1956. Which leads us back to this reflecting pool and the cornucopia of color surrounding it. State parks restored this reflecting pool from its swimming pool days back to the original design so that today, in their words, you can enjoy the music of cascading water and the solitude of this spot without the constant noise of the mine shafts just a short distance away. The Empire Mine State Park and Reflecting Pool, located in Grass Valley, Nevada County. And with that, this half-hour tour is over. And Deirdre, I hope you enjoyed it. Mike, thank you. There's some really incredible ideas that you've given us in this last half hour. So many ideas to get the family out and hopefully you feel inspired to go out and explore California. But remember, and this is important, be respectful of nature. That means pack in, pack out. Don't leave anything in any of those beautiful places that wasn't there when you got there. We've got to respect Mother Nature, and that's how we all get to enjoy it. Thanks for watching this edition of Explore Outdoors. Get out, have some fun, and enjoy California.